Hey everyone, in this video we'll be solving this problem that came in IDJ 1995. So it's a it's a long question. It has three questions basically in this question. So yeah, so let's begin. So we have OA which is a metal rod and it is being rotated with an angular velocity omega that is constant uh, along a conducting circular ring and it is in a uniform magnetic field. And also, uh, it's given that it is rotate, being rotated in the vertical plane. So we have to take into account gravity, right? And the axis is horizontal. So, and we have a circuit which has a resistor R and an inductor of inductance L, which is connected across the point O and C. So initially the switch S is open and we are required to find the induced EMF across the terminals of the switch when this was still open. And then we need to find, uh, then it's given that the switch S is closed. And then we have to find the current as a function of time that flows through the circuit. And then we need to obtain the torque that is required to maintain the constant angular speed. So let's begin. So first we need to be okay with the fact that if a rod is moving with a velocity v perpendicular to a ma uniform magnetic field, we can write the motional EMF as BVL. And, and in order to find the polarity of the battery, we just have to do V cross B. So if you do V cross B in this case, you'll get the answer as the downward direction. So the positive polarity of the battery would be in the in this direction and the negative would be in this direction. So basically we can convert this, uh, this conducting rod into a battery whose EMF is equal to BVL and its polarity is of this sort. So in, in the case of a rotating rod in a magnetic field, in a uniform magnetic field, if we go a distance x and, and uh, look at a small element of width dx, its velocity will be x omega, where omega is the angular velocity of the rod. And the, B, the motional EMF due to this dx element would be bv dx. And if you do v cross r, I mean v cross b in this case, uh, the magnetic field is into the plane by the way, and if you do v cross b, you'll get the answer as left which means the positive polarity, I mean the polarity of this small element will be of this sort. And and there are like, and if you, sum a, if you sum all the DEs because of these individual elements, these are just, this is just like a series combination of cells and you can just find the effective EMF by integrating it. So if you integrate this, we know V is omega X. And if you integrate it, you will get the answer as B omega R square by and that is the, so basically you can convert this whole configuration into a cell whose EMF is B omega R square by two. And the polarity is like this. So that's the whole point. So now, yeah, so basically we can convert this part of the circuit into just a cell whose, B, whose EMF is B omega R square by two. So initially, uh, okay, I have to redraw it. Initially, it's, it was given that the switch S was open. So this current I was zero. And they asked the EMF that was across the terminals of the switch. Now, as the current was zero, that EMF would just be equal to the EMF of the battery. So the answer for the A option is just B omega R squared by two. Now, after that, the switch was closed, which means a current I would start flowing on the circuit and we can use Kirchhoff's voltage law uh, across this loop and we'll get this. And if we rearrange uh, the current I terms and the DT terms on the other side, and if we integrate it at a time t equal to zero, the current was zero and at, ge at a general time t, let's say the current is I. And if we integrate it, we'll get I as a function of time as this. Okay. Now, that was option one done and A also done. Now we have to find the torque that is required to maintain the constant angular speed um, at the steady state, by the way. 
and it is also given that the rod was along the positive x-axis um, initially which means the rod was in this direction okay okay so first of all what is the steady state so the steady state is basically when the current in the circuit has become constant or we can say that di by dt has become zero which means a potential drop across the inductor which is actually l di by dt is zero so we can just forget about the inductor as if it doesn't even exist okay so that is the steady state and it's very easy to find the steady state current uh, well we can just analyze this after a very long time so this would tend to zero right if you put t tending to infinity this would tend to zero so we get the steady state current to be b omega r square by 2r okay so now we have to determine the torque that we have to uh, apply externally in order to maintain the constant angular velocity so for that i am writing down the differential form of work energy theorem so i'll so i'll explain the individual terms so this is the small work done by all the conservative forces so in our question we just have the work done by mg that is conservative right i mean mg is the only conservative force and this dw the second term is basically the all the heat that is exchanged between the system or the heat dissipated in this case through the resistor and this third term is all the work done by the external non-conservative forces which would be the external force that we apply to maintain the constant angular velocity and this is the small change in kinetic energy all these summation summed up will equal to the small change in kinetic energy now the reason that i wrote this way is because we can directly deal with power so if i differentiate this and okay this would be equal to zero because the angular velocity is constant right so what is the first term it is basically the power of mg right the rate of work done by gravity and that we can determine uh, let's determine that so now the rod is here and the at the center the gra the force of gravity is acting downwards mg and the velocity of this point is omega times r by 2 and it's in this direction now we know this angle is theta which means this angle would be pi minus theta so if you do the dot product of f dot v because we have to find the power right so we have to find f dot v the power of gravity would come out to be mg times omega r by 2 times minus cos theta right that's why i wrote this this is the first term and the heat dissipated it's pretty easy the only uh, element uh, through which heat is dissipated in this question is through the resistor and we know the uh, power dissipated through the resistor is simply i square r okay now they have asked specifically in the case of the steady state so the i would simply be the steady state current so and the power dissipated would be i square r so if you calculate it this will come out to be the power dissipated so the first term is done the second term is done now the uh, now the third term is basically the work that we have to do the rate of work that we have to do and that is equal to that that is equal to tau times omega so and this tau is a torque that we need to externally apply in order to maintain a constant angular velocity omega okay so that will be positive and all this summed up will come out to be zero which means the external torque that we have to apply comes out to be this. So this is the answer for the last question. So like the video guys, thanks for watching.